All right, all right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode two of the Inside the GEFA podcast, your only in-source inside information for GEFA news and events. And now here is your host, El Presidente, Mr. James Simerson. Take it away, sir. I think we're live. <laughs> El <Okay>. Presidente. <laughs> I love it. So we've got this great episode for everybody so far. Um, like I said before, we're going to have... The, uh, a couple of buffaloes on here. Levi and we have Bill Flurry head coach Timmy Donaldson on for the Raptors. Uh, we have Hall of Fame nominee uh, DJ Farrell, uh, all-time record holder for interceptions in a season. Uh, we got Brent Beck, finally. <laughs> finally, one episode. Done, uh, <laughs> it took your mic, man. I can barely hear what you're saying. Thanks. I got my mic up. You better turn it up louder. I don't know if anybody else is having that problem, but I can barely hear you. Uh, I don't know. Terrible. I wasn't going to say anything. I didn't last week, but. All right. So, Trey, let's get into it. Uh, you're going to do your interview with DJ. All right. Uh, thank you, James, for that fantastic introduction after the one you received. Um, I am here with what many consider one of the greatest GFA DBs um, to date, um, DJ Farrell. Any introduction words that you want to take on for yourself or uh, you want to? Uh, you know, I like talking about myself. All right, fair enough. We're about to do that this whole time. Um, <laughs> <I know. clears throat> so, question real quick. Let's just quick icebreaker. What would it mean for you to be a GFA Hall of Famer? Uh, honestly, man, it'd be an honor. Um, it means it means a lot to represent, you know, my family as a whole, uh, all my former teammates and organizations that I played for and have been associated with. Um, it just kind of pays homage. So the to my journey throughout these years that I played almost a decade in a GEFA. Um I don't know, man. I just I just always looked at looked at it as trying to be a role model like on and off the field. Uh, because you never know who's watching. And hopefully they're watching me treat the game with respect. And you know, I, I would like to say that the game treated me well as well. Fair, fair. Answer. Um, so as you know, you've only been out of the league. What is it going on? Two years now? Yeah, something like second, that. Second year old. Um, how does it feel to break the norm being eligible after only uh being retired for such a short period of time? Um, I, I didn't really look at it as like breaking the norm, but but I can dig it. Like I think it's good for the game. Obviously, like I feel like it's very difficult playing D B in a league. Um, and having success with it for an extended period of time, I like to say. Um, but I don't think it really mattered to me whether I got in there after five years or after one, just that I got in there. I feel you. All right. But, uh, but just jumping off of that, do you feel like you're you're opening up an avenue for – other players like down the line to possibly join you in that? Or uh, do you feel you want to be the one? No, man, I, I, I'd like to think that, you know, it's opening the gates for other people, something for them to strive for, you know, more, just more motivation. Um, if I knew that I could get in that fast, um, you know, I would have worked even harder than I already did, but you know, it's nice. All right. With a, uh, a quick turn, you, you've made the transition from uh, player to coach. 
Uh, you were recently announced to the Comanche coaching staff. What's your outlook on the season for the Comanche? Um, and what are some things that you hope to provide for that team and staff? Um, I believe the league is wide open this year. You know, you know me, I'm humble, man. I'm just looking to add my experience to an already championship caliber team. Just sharing some of my experiences and helping out coaching these young DBs. You know, it gives me an opportunity to stay around the game, share my knowledge that was passed down to me. Um, a lot of knowledge is passed down from me, from my, you know, everybody who's my older brother is, you know, D coordinator, uh, Jaquan Farrell Sr. And another family member that most don't talk about because uh, he played years ago, but my uncle, Travis Williams, shared a lot of information and helped mold me into like the defensive back that I was in the league. Everything that I did was from was taught to me from those guys. All right. All right. So um, just piggybacking off of the DB conversation here, uh, what's your outlook on the landscape of the G for DBs, um, present and going into the future? Um, my outlook. Uh, I do watch a lot. I do watch a lot, a lot of film, especially on the DBs. Um, for obvious reasons. I believe the future of the league is in good hands. Uh, I love the fact that, you know, more teams are building the foundation to be successful and compete. I really love the addition that was made where, where film was made available for everybody, not just as a spectator, but to help teams better prepare for games. Um, I feel like it kind of leveled the playing field a little bit. Um, uh, as far as like the league... You know, I love, I don't know, man, I just love watching these DBs. I just think there's a lot of talent in the league, um, a lot of untapped potential. That's really, like, my big thing, watching film. A lot of kids with natural athletic ability, man. I'm just like, if you could just fine-tune some of their fundamentals, man, they don't even know how good they can be. But so I look forward to, you know, seeing some of these guys blossom into – all stars and you know perennial all league players. So I got a little excited because um, I had out of this great follow up question. Um, I ha have to ask you: Can you name your top five DBs in the league right now? Oh, that's tough, man. Top five in the league right now. Hmm. And where do you put? Um, Quentin Butler. Where would I put who? Nothing. Name your top five. Okay. Top five in the league from what I've seen last year. In no order, I'd have to. No order. I'd have to say uh, Bruce Holbert. That's okay. my guy. No order. Bruce Holbert, Abdul Murphy. Okay. Um. Uh, let me think. Sean Sean Steve when he does play on defense, because he can play corner, he can play safety, he can play in a slot, and a lot of dudes do that. Mm -hmm. Um, man, just on like who's playing now? I I really want to name a bunch of old heads, man, but it's a bunch of young guys now. I'm trying to think. It's from being an all-star game. Oh. oh, no, that's tough. Who I think is the best now? I'm not even prepared for that question. Who's the best now or who has, like, potential? There's a lot of guys that have a lot of potential. But, you know, I'm critical, man. Critical of myself. More, just give me two more names. You got me the three. I like, like what we're doing. I love One, where we're two, going. Two, three. Uh-huh. I just need two more names. Mm. Oh, oh man, I can't even believe I almost forgot this kid. Um, the guy, the, the he played for the I think he played for the the Mustangs last year. He's tough. Um, forty two. Mm. Not familiar with his game. Mensa. Mensa. I, I, okay. Okay. Mensa. okay. Yeah, Mensa, uh, All Star game last year. I was really impressed with with him, man. We kind of just, uh, we were, you know, we had 
we didn't have as many players as the Mountain Conference did. Uh, I think it was like two years ago at the All Star Game. That's when I really got my first look at them. We kind of just like implemented a couple of things defensively, just to kind of make it competitive. And he just picked up on everything fast. And he's not like he's tough. Like not even just his athletic ability, but like his his football IQ. Like he's one I I enjoy watching a lot. Um, I'm trying to think who else. I'm trying I'll to think of teams. Off the, you off the hook. Oh. Um, Oh, the last one. That's tough, man. It's a lot of it's good players, awesome. man. But yeah, it, oh, it's a yeah. it's a toss Matt, up. Matt Rodesey, that's your answer. Walk it in. Matt. Okay, 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 okay. I was I, I was like, hoping I somebody like, would jump in. And I know. Say I, like, something. I like I like that. I like that. All right. Well, let's let's move on. I didn't. I I, I feel like I I stirred something up for later, but I I, I put that <laughs> soup up. Um. What are what are some things you hope to see come to the league in the uh, near future or distant future? Your your choice. Um, I think I think a lot of what's going on now is is great. I love how you guys just keep building on things. The interviews, keeping spectators and players engaged. The podcast, like I said, the film is my favorite thing. Especially like, like I'm work when I work all week and I got so much time. I just love watching games, watching film taking notes been doing that for years um i love with what james and you know everyone's doing as far as like having the kickoff classic all the stuff set up for that you know showing love to you know last year's championship team uh hall of fame nominees he always gets like school bands different activities food trucks like i like that stuff just pretty much things that bring more people and more exposure like to the league that they can really like see these guys play. Cause there's a lot of great athletes in this league. Well, that, I feel that I agree. First of all, um, but uh, let's, let's hit the home stretch here. Um, who was the toughest wide receiver you had to go? <laughs> uh, man, that's tough. Toughest wide receiver I've ever had to guard. Well, let's just start by saying that I was typically in my career matched up on X receivers. Mm -hmm. So I got a, I got a couple of guys that you know I was thinking about that I've jotted down. Apologize if I missed some, but this is kind of like my guys, and I got years with them. But um, one guy I remember from like 2016 was X from the Wildcats, Xavier Warner. Mm -hmm. Um was always a ch was always a challenge for me just cuz he was a he was like a power forward that played wide receiver and you know most guys that I guarded I won't say I was like stronger than but I could hold my own as far as like strength but he was like like he was in he made some great catches and stuff had a good battle with him in the all-star game that year um Greg Williams in 2019 was tough he was tough in 2019 when we played him in the Keystone Bowl, and he was I, – I forgot what the year was. It might have been 2018 when we played them at uh, Cumberland Valley. And he, it was like his rookie season. Like, he was, like, on a tear. Like, that game was, like, was crazy. Uh, he was special. Um, obviously, like, some, some of my bros I played with. Like, LC was tough. But I always – I even when I talk with him, I always talk about playing him in my rookie season. Uh, 2013, man, I, it was crazy. Like, he was just – he was a terror that year, and obviously he built upon that many years after that. He's always fun to match up with. And, you know, you kind of get John back and forth and stuff. He makes the game fun. It's energized. Um, Stum, I really – Mike Stum, I really only battled with him, like, in practices and stuff until the 2020 COVID year. Um, but – Every year, he's always added something to his game, man. He's a tough matchup for anybody. Like, not just 6'6", but he does it all. Like, he blocks. You know what I mean? He blocks. He'll, he'll make those plays. Man, his catch that he had in um, that same game I was telling you about against the Hitman in 17 or, or 18, the game winner, was crazy. Um, he was tough. Uh, I had Kez in 2013. You know, I'm, I don't have to explain about him. He was tough. Jordan Bell in 2016 was tough for the Tomahawks. 
Um, a guy that many don't even remember, like Dub White, Christopher White. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, ro- I had him my rookie season. He kind of baptized me a little bit. You know, I joke around about that now. Um, I'm missing one. Oh, Dem- Dominguez, 2019 for the shock. Like, he was rough that year. We had him in a regular season, and we had him in a conference chip. Like, he was tough. Man, I don't think but, he ever had to go. Either, so. But, like, yeah, all right, Trey, you ain't, ain't getting none of that. No, but like I said, a lot, a lot of the guys I was guarding are ex-receivers. I don't really get many slots unless, you know, in zone or something like that. But I wouldn't really kind of put that on there like that. Yeah. There's, obviously, there's a lot more receivers that are great in the league. Understandable. He tried to be as, like, minorly problematic as you could with that answer, and I let that rock. But you're not going to do that every time. <laughs> just trying to All be right. as I let you. I let you be really. You, yeah, I let you be really diplomatic just now, but I, I, I'll let that rock this time. Um, what you what, what, what you what, what you want me to say? Like, what you want me to say, Trey? One name. Let everybody else do. Let them all feel it. You know. But we'll we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it off air. Uh, what championship was your favorite? Um. Oh, that's tough, man. Um, you have a couple. Yeah, I do have a couple. Um, I would say, obviously, my first one was special. That was 2016. Um, 2017 was was a lot of fun for us, not a lot of other people. Um, I don't know if, if you know, but after the six, 2016 chip, we broke a lot of, like, offensive records. Um yeah. I, I forgot how much we won, Bob, but we had, like, the record for the largest margin in the Keystone Bowl. So, like, the next year, Q came on as D.C., um, put a lot of emphasis in trying to, like, shut down teams defensively and added some dogs on that team. You know, Todd George was still on there. Um, Rob Chase, I don't know if many people remember him. He played <laughs> – he ended up playing, like, defensive end and, like, linebacker. We had Coda. Like, it was just a lot of dogs, like, on that team. And we broke a lot of records, like, defensively um, that year. So that was fun for me, personally, because there was no stress with the games. But um, this is an answer that most wouldn't expect. Favorite chip? I actually would say the championship game during the COVID year, man, Comanche versus Cyclones. That's That's probably my favorite championship, even though we lost. It's my favorite championship just because if you, anybody that's played with me or has been around me knows, like, what I bring to the game, how I operate, how I prepare. And, you know, th- that year just, like, challenged me the most mentally out of every championship I've ever been in. Um, I And I actually used that, that game because my son was there, too. I used that game often as a teaching point for him you know i was like obviously he knew he knew the whole deal he's like playing against a bunch of my brothers on the other side you know a lot of animosity that was going on that year uh there was the build-up leading up to that game where both teams were pretty much on a collision course for that keystone bowl yeah. um but yeah man it was and it was it was a good game it was a really really good game yep yeah, i still feel it. um Best team you competed against? Um, yeah, that's a tough question too. Because if you, if you really think about it, star power would have to be that that Cyclones team, twenty twenty. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it, it has to be that. I'd agree. I'd agree. That's all I got for you. Um, is there anything? Anything you want to say on behalf of the Comanche coaching staff? Uh, anything on behalf of the team? Anything you want to warn other teams about? Um, the floor is yours. You got about 30 seconds to go. All right, I'll be quick. No, not. I don't have anything to say about that. I just to elaborate on the best team I ever played against. So 2020, like I said, was Cyclones with star power. Um, there were some other games that were challenging, but fun. Like I said, 2018 Hitman versus Cyclones game went down to the wire. 
walk off catch by Stum to win the game. 2018 versus Vikings, uh, torn hamstring, hopping on one leg. We were up big. They came back. Uh, game came down to uh, last defensive stop. That was a fun one. 2018 shock, regular season game to keep the streak alive. Uh, I don't know if guys remember that. I wasn't supposed to play that game after missing weeks with that same hamstring injury. Game was tight. I had to beg my brother to play to play after halftime. He let me play. Uh, had an interception and a walk off interception to win that game. So that's always like a good memory for like my family and stuff too. And then that 2019 conference chip versus the shock was always a memorable one. Uh, they had our number, uh, but big plays were made. You know, I had a big pick, and I remember, I remember you had you robbed me of an interception. Now I'm just playing. Now you had a big pick. You had a huge pick six before the half, bro. And I feel like it shifted the momentum. And it took like a total team effort to win that one. So that game is always like special to me. Yep, that's up. I'm glad you brought yeah. that. Yeah, that's for you, James. James. Just cried a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like I, I saw him wince when you did that, and that just felt so good. Yeah, that was but, a good uh, one, man. But it was it was good talking to you. Um, looking forward to seeing what you guys bring to the table. Um, just with that full staff that you guys got over there of about thirteen guys, uh, <laughs> big staff. Hoping it gets you far. Pause. Um, yeah, that, that's all I got. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Jamie. All right, thanks, DJ. No problem, man. See you guys. Let's get into nation. There are more than just a little Twitter page. Uh, we got Aaron Zembauer and Levi Cook on here. <laughs> what would you say? You cut out. Yeah, can't hear with your mic there, James. Did I cut out again? Yeah, yeah, yeah mic's off. <laughs> End of the mic. Or it's 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 not off, but it just sounds weird. Where'd you get that thing from? The dollar store. Uh, <laughs> ago, yeah. Since I had to pay for all this stuff for myself for the podcast. <laughs> dollar store, no dollar general. He might have gotten it from there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> right, we, we can't bully El Presidente. He'll kick us off. Yeah. <laughs> I can't get kicked Let's off. Get into it. What are some of your biggest changes? You guys went nine and one here. Had a pretty good season. What's our uh, mindset going into this season? I mean, I think uh, we've seen the past two years, we've had pretty good runs. I mean, our first year was two years ago, we went seven and three. Made the playoffs, lost to the Vikings. That stung. But being a first-year team, I mean, we kind of expected to take our beatings, um, and that was one of them. Last year, we went 9-1, and one, uh, Vikings being the only loss in the regular season. We really just wanted to make that push into the playoffs. You know, game one in the playoffs, we go against the Wildcats. Um, we saw them earlier in the year and got the win. Whenever they had some of those Savages players come over, they really improved going into the second half of the season. Um, so definitely, I mean, obviously we want to win games during through the season, but we're looking for those playoff wins. Um, it's time. So I'd say that this year that's the emphasis is postseason. Um, anything to touch on that, Levi? No, you cover that pretty good, man. <laughs> playoff wins have to deal with uh, – Levi? What was that? Yeah, we, I can't hear him. I communicated from the submarine. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I was, I was just about Ford, to say it's, it's Wi Fi. That new Wi Fi. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> I was time. just about to say it sounds like he's talking underwater. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on? Oh, you had it for a second. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Somewhat. Yep, it's better than it was.
Wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Trey, come on, interview us. I was about to say, yo, James, just send me whatever question. I got it. So, good evening. Good evening, Trey. How are Gentlemen, you? I'm fantastic. How are you guys doing this evening? Uh, representing the Buffaloes, of course. Um, it sounded like James already got the question of what you got, what your outlook on the season is going to be. Um, but what what do you guys look to bring? Last year, you guys brought a certain physicality that I don't think the league was ready for as a new team. Um Automatically and just physically in general. Um, what what do you look – how do you look to build off of that? Go ahead, Levi. You can take this one. Okay. Um, I think that we have developed new schemes. Um, we are too one-dimensional at times, whether it's offense or defensively, uh, whether we stuck in the coverages defensively and didn't get out of it, or offensively if we stuck to a run game. I think this year we focused more on trying to spread it out uh, I would say last year, I think it was, we did the math. It was, I think, 68% run to 32% pass. 22, 22, 22, 32, 32, yeah. So I think this year we're going to try to at least go 40, 60. You got to break it down a little bit more. I think last year what hurt us, especially, you know, the Vikings loss and the Wildcats loss, uh, running the ball, you get behind the chains, third and long. It's pretty evident what you're going to do. You're going to throw the ball. So I think if we make more manageable second and short, third and shorts, we have the ability then to uh, reach deeper into our playbook. So we just have to get more familiar with uh, different variations in our passing game uh, off of our off of our run game. Uh, two years now in a row, we led the league in rushing yards and touchdowns. I know this is a very uh, heavy passing league, so that's why. Uh, but I think that that's definitely like our bread and butter. We just have to be able to develop something off of that offensively. I think to touch on that, too, if you're going to play physical football, which I can promise you we will not be getting away from, um, you also have to have good <laughs> – you have to uh, pin guys back and make it long for them. I don't think we always did the best on special teams on having good field, field position. We have a really good kicker coming in this year, and then our punter is a rock star. He played last year. We just have to rely on them. I mean, trust your defense, trust your offense – and play good field position. Um, there's no point in shooting ourselves in the foot. We can manage games ourselves. Um, we're not going to give it to the other team to let them manage it. So I'd say that's probably our biggest biggest things this year. Okay. Um, I just got a quick quick piggyback question, and then I'll toss it to Thor or Brent or whoever. Um, wh who are some guys, like, names to look out for? Like, we, we know the – the names that yeah, won the awards last year and yeah, seem to be the face of the franchise. Who who who's somebody up and coming that we can eye out for? Uh, I think uh, number twenty two, Bryce McLeister. He was a, a rookie last year. Um, me and him have, yeah, have been working out uh, <laughs> each other for a while now, and he's definitely made some gains. He's bigger, faster, stronger than he was last year. Um, he's actually helped uh, create some more of the passing concepts. So, like I said, we'll use we'll use them in various different positions. Uh, something to definitely keep an eye on. And then uh, number three, Andrew May, H back tight end. Uh, he does a lot of the dirty work, um, in and out every play. He's like a fullback. Uh, we do give him some love every once in a while, passing the ball. But he's definitely what makes our offense tick. He cleans up the box the way we have our option use. So he's definitely someone I'd keep in mind too. And don't forget, we have an awesome O line that that works in the trenches. I mean, it doesn't happen without those big boys up front making it happen. So for sure, offensively, that's, that's definitely our key guys. Um, defensively, Corey Myers, if you don't know him yet, you should, if you're not watching film on him, you should. <laughs> 23. Number 23. <laughs> that's your problem to fix if you don't watch him in film. Um, but then I think some of the, one of the issues we had last year is how do you, how do you compliment a Corey Myers on your right side? So Levi Hawkenberry coming in from the Tomahawks to to sure up that left side. I don't think we're going to have a weak side on that D, D line. Um, and then as far as, you know, the rest of the D linemen that, that funnel in, every single one of them can play. So I don't expect us to be tired halfway through the game. We're just going to reload uh, whoever the next man up is. Um, defensively, I mean, we have a three-year starter corner that he holds his own. Um and then we picked up a, a new corner this year that he's been making plays offensively and defensively. I don't know if I really want to shout him out yet or not. 
you guys can find out about him week one. Um, but I really think defensively, we aren't looking to have any one guy take control of the game. I think we all play very well as a crew. Um, and that it's truly the next man up. If someone goes down, I know there's people behind them to, uh, to step in. we got a lot of guys that are capable and a lot of guys fighting for that starting position. So I'm excited for both sides. That's all. I just got one question. If if Trey's done, yep, good. So I mean, hearing all your guys is like you know key all season work that you're doing on your offense and your defense. Um, personally, I do the stats and I watch a lot of films, so I know all those guys you were talking about. Uh, what do you think it's going to take for you guys to get over the hurdle and you know compete for that Mountain Conference title and your shot at the Keystone Bowl? I'm going to take this one because I've heard about it all all year. So uh, being one of the captains on the defensive side of the ball, we have to have better defense. Um, we have shown some really good things, but I just don't think we put it together every time. Um, and, you know, a couple of those games, we let up a lot of passing yards. And that has to be something we address. We have to be better at stopping the pass. I mean, we – we go up against a running offense every Saturday in practice. We know how to stop the run. At least I think we do. Um, but what we might not get as many looks at uh, is good passing plays. <laughs> but no, uh, and he gives us work on that and everything. But I definitely think that's something we need to work on this year is just making sure we're prepared to handle these higher octane offenses. Octane, that's a big word. That is a big word for me. Yeah, it was pretty good. I, like I looked it up. <laughs> Came in prepared. <laughs> I promise you I did it. <laughs> so you guys got the rappers in the classic, right? I'm assuming that's why you're both on this podcast tonight. <laughs> yeah, and I do want to say one thing. All of their uh all of their comebacks. I just hope you guys look up recipes. There's no buffalo meat in buffalo dip or buffalo hot sauce. <laughs> That's wings. just <laughs> buffalo wings. Like, that's all names, guys. I, I just hope you guys are smart enough to know that. But anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was going to so ask funny. if you had anything to say to the Raptors, but. <laughs> no, but <you> know. <laughs> I mean, I was just going to say, like, you got you guys have played previously. I, I'm pretty sure you guys have played before. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. I mean, what do you what do you guys think it's going to take this time? Because I, uh, I think the last time you guys beat them up pretty good. So, you know, they're going to come in prepared. They've been winning this game. You know what I mean? It's a good test for them to establish, you know, obviously their their success and their, their off-season work that they put in. So what do you think it's going to take to, uh, you know, be able to go in and, and handle that business again? I, I honestly genuinely think the, the key to winning this game is whoever posts the most on Facebook. So then you have more to, like, piss you off. Yeah. Game. So, yeah. like, last year, last year we shot it. And we made a video with, like, background music and then sent it to the chat the night before the game. And it was, like, they're on the clock, TikTok, whatever. So we I made a joking. video of it and then, like, just gave it to our players and then they just took it and ran with it. Yeah, but no, so, I think this year, whoever talks the most crap is going to win. I just think that that's yeah. where you get better in this league. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> in all honesty, I think every team comes out and saying, yeah, we're going to have gap integrity. We're going to punch you in the mouth, and maybe you do for one quarter. But bring it for four. That's, I mean, there we've had issues with some physical teams. I mean, look at the Vikings. They hung there with us, and they beat us. But – you got to hang there for four. So, I mean, just bring the physicality. I think that's one of the things they probably didn't have last year. They had some great players. But um, I think that they have a very different style of offense than than kind of what we run. And it was more of a finesse football team versus a physical football team. I mean, they had a lot of success last year. But I think in, in those games, the physical football team lines up well. But we'll let the play talk. So. Yeah, and then like a lot of clock management stuff, too. Yeah. If you're like if you're gonna go out there and and throw the ball like three or four times, you're stopping the clock, right? You're not really giving your your defense much time to break. And the offense goes out there and you know in this league four or five minute drive that's long, so it comes down to like clock management for sure. I like yeah, it. I'm feeling that. <clears throat> Thor. 
I mean, you guys covered things great. Ultimately, um, it's been awesome having you guys in the league. I think the Buffaloes have been a great addition. Uh, you guys play a different type of game, and people have to prepare for you differently than everybody else. And, uh, you know, it's always a great atmosphere in the games when we play you guys. Um, the only thing I have to add is I know people get excited about upgraded facilities and and, and the experience <laughs> of the game being better. And um, I'm pretty sure you guys worked really hard to get yourselves into a different play, like field situation this year. Just fill us in about that a little bit. Yeah, go ahead, Lila. Uh, so we worked, uh, we're working with a uh, local school district. Uh, half of it's in Bedford County, the other half's in Blair. And uh, they are allowing us to use the turf in conjunction with them. We're having a night game where they have their uh, youth program will be there for one of the events. Uh, they're hoping to open up the concession stands. Um, then all money and proceeds will benefit uh, the football program uh, at that school, uh, Claysburg uh, High School, Claysburg School District. Uh, couldn't be more thankful for uh, Chuck Kastik that was helping uh, move along here with that. He's familiar with the league, so he really helped us to get on the field there. So huge shout out to him. And then um, we decided to take all the available funding, and uh, we took all the funding that we made off the of sponsorships this year and donated it back to the team and gave everyone a free gold alternate jersey uh, that they can uh, keep on completion of the season. Yeah, and I think that, uh, I mean, we've talked about it in some league meetings and stuff like that, but uh, if you do what you're supposed to on the field and, uh, you know, you're respectful, the community outreach will be awesome. Uh, we had a lot of sponsors this year, and that's honestly why we're able to afford better facilities. We're able to afford better equipment. Um, and honestly, like that, that means so much to us to be able to go out there and represent all those awesome sponsors that come to each game. And, you know, Everett was awesome and we're very thankful we got to play there, but, uh, we really wanted better seating, better concessions, everything else for our fans that travel. So I'm super pumped. I know Levi is too. I think it's a very big upgrade. It's going to help out for watching the games on film. It's just going to look more professional. Um, also hoping to live stream some games and stuff like that. So I think that's just huge for everybody that enjoys just watching FIFA games, whether you're a fan of us or not. Good stuff. Okay, quick question. Is that a Buffalo's hoodie? Yeah. <laughs> Yours is, yeah. Mine's Buffalo's too. Don't say, wanna... Save a horse, ride the Buffalo's. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Good fire. Let me get a hoodie. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Last year, Vinny was the winner of the the one we sent out. We might get one to you, Trey. <laughs> With this well, cowboy hat, that would be perfect. <laughs> and Montana for the summer. <laughs> well, right. we're looking for you guys at the kickoff classic this year um i really think this matchup with the raptors could be really interesting and and you know it adds a really big exciting game right to the middle of the afternoon and this should be a really great event i really appreciate you guys coming on the show and you know giving us a little insight as to what's going on over there in buff nation and you know we'll see you guys in just a short time thank you guys go buff Good luck, gentlemen. Thanks Boys. for coming on, guys. So, the other half of that kickoff classic showdown is the Berks County Raptors. Um, with us today, we have Brooklyn Wells, and we have the Raptors head coach, uh, Timothy Donaldson. Uh, thanks for coming and joining us today, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. So I know Trey probably has a solid lineup of questions for us here, but I'll go ahead and jump in and get a couple out early. Um, Brooklyn, take a couple minutes to give us a little bit of background from you and the GEFA and, uh, you know, what your role with the Raptors is this season. Well, I didn't play last year. I did play in the FIFA just one year, the first year with the Raptors, but we all know how that went. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, last year I played in the AAL for the Steel City Stampede. 
And uh, before that, I played for the Raptors. I also play outdoor football, 11 man for East Penn Raiders. Um, with, with the Raptors, like, what is your your role with the team? Are you, you know, what's your main position? Um, I'm a Mac linebacker. Well, I say Mac because I'm used to arena style. I come from indoor, but uh, linebacker, defensive captain. So good stuff. Um, Timothy, I'm pretty sure you've been with the Raptors organization and different levels off and on over the years for quite some time. Um, give us a little bit of background on you and the Raptors and, uh, you know, in your GDFA experience. Well, the background with the Raptors itself, um, been along for pretty much some time as a player. I started off, um, in about 2015, uh, then moved on. I had left and went to, we started our own group, um, our own team, the Berks, uh, the Tri-County Lions. But then we came back along um, and then experience with the GIFA. Uh, the first year around, uh, we didn't have so high of expectations for ourselves. Uh, we knew it was better competition coming from the MIFL. Um, we knew it was going to be a lot different. Uh, we had to make some adjustments because of the ruling being indoor, as Brooklyn had mentioned before. Um, and this year along, I feel like it's going to be a lot better off for us. Uh, we have high standards, high high expectations this year with the group that we have. Um, and with the GIFA itself making the adjustments and making the league better, I'm glad we are sticking with you with the GIFA itself. Awesome. I mean, I'm one of the teams that have came out and had a scrimmage with you guys this offseason, and, and it was a really positive experience. Um, I feel I felt like um, it was really just all about football, and it was nice to get out there and get some work in, and it's good to see you guys moving forward. Um, as far as the classic goes, um, you know, we kind of got into the fact that you're facing the Buffaloes. Uh, the Buffaloes are probably one of the highest rated teams as far as physicality goes. Um, different style of play, and this will be your guys' second season to get a, a matchup with them. Um, you know, tell us a little bit about what you guys are looking forward to and, and how the Raptors are, are approaching this. Uh, as it was mentioned earlier, I'll address they are a very physical team, and we were ready for that with the group that we had. Um, it wasn't expected, but it was a very big eye opener for us. Um, and this year alone, we added some pieces. Um, as Brooklyn had mentioned, he was one of our star defensive guys, our, our main leaders, and he had stepped away last year from us. Um, but coming back, uh, again, I uh, believe the pieces that we added, we will be a physical team this year. Um, and I believe we will be able to keep it up. And just looking forward to it. Uh, <clears> Thor's <throat> dealing with something over there. Um, well, mm -hmm. I'll jump in. Uh, Brooklyn. What's going on, man? Did I hear that this is your first year in the G? Technically second, but. Second? Okay. Um, I played for the first Raptors team when, when we first joined the league, but. A couple of years ago. Okay. That's you. What's your, uh, what's from the outside looking in, what, what's your. Outlook on the GIFA. What do you what do you see as something you can bring to the GIFA, and what do you see as something you can take away from? Honestly, I like I like the I like what you guys got going on here. I like the eight man style outdoor. Um, I like how you guys promote it. You guys got the film. Um, I'm not sure if you guys live stream games. I'm not sure. Um, oh, you do. Okay, so that's that's another huge piece. Um, a lot of comp. The Buffaloes weren't in the league the first year we played, so I think the hardest team we played that year was the Cyclones. I knew a bunch of guys on that team already. Um, just all all around, great league. It's a strong league, and you guys like they said, you're. It, it, I like the way it's, you're building. 
Um, added more. Um, trying to make it bigger. I mean, make the platform bigger. You guys got this. You guys got the podcast. Um, I like that. It's that's cool. You guys can have guys come on and and talk to different players around the league. I think that's 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 major. All right. And what do you, what do you think you can um, like your game can provide for the league? Do you how do you think you can stand out? Uh, just play wise. How do you, how, what do you feel you bring play wise? I I bring, I'm going to bring that energy. (laughs) I'm quiet off the field. You're going to, you're going to hear me on the field though. Um, Smash my football (laughs) coming downhill. What? Uh, Brent? Uh, so my question is for Tim. Uh, you know, as a coach, what, do you, what what are some of the things that you've done this off season to kind of prepare yourself and your team for the upcoming season? Uh, the biggest thing is when we went out and recruiting, uh, we were looking for those dogs, those Smash Mouth football players. And, uh, and I believe we added those. And um, we made the adjustment of knowing that we, we struggled against the run big time. Um, so I know that is one thing we did work on, and I believe those pieces have been changed. Um, and even our offensive side of the ball um, has made some adjustments. We're adding the line. Um, we didn't have really much of an offensive line, and as we all know, in football, it all starts up front. And uh, I believe we'll bring something very different this year. Right on. So, uh, you know, another question for you. How do you replace a guy like Frankie? I know he's been a part of your team for a long time. He's kind of a key piece to that team. He plays a little bit of both sides of the ball. Like, you know, that's kind of a big that's kind of a big piece to lose, you know, heading in a couple of weeks out from the start of the season. How do you how do you replace a guy like that? Man, Frankie, uh, you can't replace a guy like that, young man. Uh, somebody who uh was a very hard headed young man at first, uh, but came along. <laughs> And uh, the adjustment and the the change in the style of play and just being coachable this year would have been so big. Nobody would have realized it was Frankie. Um, so I, I say, for one thing, him coming with us um, allowed us to see some things and allowed us to work with those hard-headed guys and, and knowing that we can, teaching them that they can be very coachable. And uh, But Frankie's a piece that you can't, can't replace that young man. But uh, his presence will be felt no matter what around us. He's always going to be with us. And uh, he's actually going to be joining in uh, <clears throat> with the coaches and giving inputs and stuff. So he, he'll he still be around. Good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, Brooklyn, so w- what's what's kind of like your outlook for your team this season? You know what I mean? From a player's perspective. Um, Just try to keep my guys disciplined this year um i don't really know how last season when i went to a couple of games um it's it seemed like they lost themselves in in, in a couple games like after halftime they got down they, they couldn't come back from that it was, i mean it was a mental thing so i'm trying to keep my guys on track i mean with disciplined and focused on our main goal and that as a championship, hopefully. So, but just a lot of work to get to that point. And uh, I believe we have the players to do it this year. Uh, like Timmy said, we went out, grabbed a uh, bunch of guys that you guys probably know that played for other teams in the GIFA. Um, we got Brian Sutton, um, uh, Justin Duarte, uh, Taj Flood, um, we had a we had a we added a couple major pieces that I believe we could use, and them guys came in, and it was like they've been there forever. We just clicked immediately, and I believe we have pieces to to push forward for a playoff run and hopefully a championship. That's what I'm going for. I like it. So what what's your personal outlook for yourself this year? What would you like to see yourself accomplish? I'm going for that defense uh, player of the year. 
I'm not a okay. cocky guy. Damn. <laughs> I'm not a cocky guy, but I want it. I like it. Uh, I like it. High tackle rate. Um, I'm looking for the wins. And uh, the stops on defense, I keep my guys together, level-headed. And we, we watch a lot of film. We watch a lot of film on ourselves, too. But uh, as far as me, personally, I want it all. I like to hear that, man. Good leadership goes a long way. Right. You need that. You need that. To be successful in this league, you need guys that are that other guys are willing to look up to and listen and right. and walk that line. So I like to hear it. Uh Tim, what's you know, same question to you. What's your outlook for the team perspective this year? Uh, from dude, a coaching standpoint. Uh nothing short than a championship. Keystone Bull for us. I, I see it. Um, a lot of leaders, and I see a lot of young men that I would expect to to step up. Um, with addition of, he didn't mention Max Virgos. Um, some people, he's never played in the GFA, but a uh, young man, a leader. Uh, and I believe that they're all going to come together and no short than the championship this year. Um, and actually for them just to come together even more, um, which they have in these last month or two. Um, I have seen these young men come together, not just on the field, but off the field. Um, and that's what we're looking for. What do you personally want out of yourself as a coach this season? I just want to see these young men succeed. That's all. They want to, They want wins as much as I do. Um, I don't expect nothing big. I'm not really a, a guy to be out there. Even like these moments here, I just want to be back there. I just... Be silent. I don't like being in the pace of anything. Uh, but I just want to see them succeed. And I know if they do, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Love to hear it. All right. So I'm going to just jump back to the classic because I don't really know if anybody said anything about it. But like I said earlier, when we were talking to the Buffaloes, you guys played them before. Um, it didn't really go that well for you. What are you guys? Are you guys looking for that redemption this time? Like, you know, you guys, you guys ready for this one? Uh, I could say it's, it's football. It's, you know what I mean? Any given day, anything can happen for anybody. And uh, I can't say we're totally prepared for it, but from compared to last year, we're in a much better position than we were last year um, to, to face them. And uh, I believe we'll be all right. There's the, like I said, the key piece is even a younger guy named Kyle Lash. Um, he's a young man that I, I believe it's going to be a help for us on both sides of the ball. And I do believe we are set to to be prepared to put up a fight this year and not just lay down at halftime like we did. Even though we were short numbers big time and the travel was rough, um, this year would be, be different. It's not last year. It's a neutral site this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that travel I was can't rough wait. for us. Yeah, and this is going to be a huge game for Brooklyn. I mean, playing mm -hmm. the line position, um, you know, going up against the Buffaloes and their their aggressive run attack, um, it's going to be a big game for you right out the gates. You know, some people see and hope for a little bit of a buildup, but you guys are just going to hit the ground running with this season. I mean, with everybody playing everybody, um, there's going to be some epic matchups and. And I can't wait to see this. This should be a really exciting game. Um, it, you know, we gave them the same message. I know you're a really humble guy, Tim. Um, I don't know if anybody in Brooklyn wants to say anything. You guys have a message for the league about you guys coming into the kickoff classic. Anything you want to say to the Buffaloes in general? Like one last word from the team before you guys get ready to head into this matchup? Honestly, uh for us, we, we don't even have anything focused on it. We're just here ready to play. So I say you see them 23rd, 3.30. That's it for me. I don't think there's nothing really special to really say too much. Our guys really do a lot of the talking on the Facebook as it goes. But we've actually learned to tell them to cut that down a little bit. So we actually here just to play and, and less talk this year. Awesome. I love it. Keep it football. Keep it. 
Well, well, good really, luck to you guys, man. Yeah, we really appreciate you guys coming on and and uh, you know giving us some insight on what's going on in Raptorland, and we'll see you guys at the kickoff classic on the twenty third. Good luck on the twenty third, gentlemen. Thank well, you, guys. Thank you. See you there. See you there. So, Trey, you got anything else in particular lined up for this evening? Uh, n- nothing. Nothing really. That's all I got. Nice little long-winded interview with DJ Farrell, the future G4 Hall of Famer, or whether it's first ballot, second ballot, whatever he needs to be voted in on. If it's anything less than a first ballot, somebody's brain dead. Agreed. Uh, next week, we should be sitting down and talking with a couple people from the Williamsport Wildcats and a couple people from the Wilkes-Barre Warriors organization. Um, another interview lined up um, from one of our uh, Hall of Fame nominees next week, and uh, that'll start to line us up and get us ready for the kickoff classic. Um, Dan, you want to help us tie up the loose strings here and get on out of this episode? Absolutely, God of Thunder. Thank you, everyone, for tuning to episode two of the Inside the G Foot 2.0. Thank you to both the Raptors and the Buffaloes. I blanked on their name for a second for coming on today. Could they be the team that wins the Keystone Bowl? at the end of the season, or could it be any of the other six teams in the league? Or could you have spoke, could we have spoken to the further, to the, do we, I cannot talk today. Do we have yet to speak to the GFA champions? We'll just have to wait and see, but again, thank you guys, and um, we see you guys next week, Monday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace. Big name. Peace. Peace. Big names on the move. Yep. Off live? I don't know.